No way, jumping hour for $240. I got a lemon. Timex is the champion of good value for money as we've seen the brand already offering good quality watches for extremely modest prices despite the market trends. The brand didn't stop here and a couple of weeks ago Timex came up with a Q3 time zone chronograph. A budget tool watch with the capability to measure three time zones on top having a chronograph function as well. These features being cased on a specific and beloved Q design. This model is sharing the same case chassis of the Q Panda Chronograph, an already successful watch adopted quickly by the enthusiasts on top coming up with interesting features like the grippy bidirectional frictional bezel similar to the initial Q, the new redesigned bracelet or the super cool rubber ring that surrounds the crown of the watch. Everything described being priced below the incredible price of $240. This is not expected to be a perfect product at this price range, but somehow Timex knows how to create a shortcut between a well-built product and the price, which always succeeds to put a smile on your face. Because you look at it and say how they managed to make such a fun, well-sized and complicated wrist companion for G-Shock money. As design, I've been spending time with an IWC Pilot Valjoux chronograph recently and honestly I started to like the 6, 9, 12 o'clock positioning of the subdials. And the Timex Q3 time zones is built based on the same theme. Somehow this dial design is recognized as a purposeful instrument. And Timex focused exactly on this statement. The function of the 3 time zone is tailored to provide accuracy and understanding in the same time. We basically have the ability to track three time zones and although it looks complicated, it's not. The first time zone is the regular displaying of the time, which has the jumping hour feature, with the ability to set independently from the minute counter or the GMT hand, jumping from one hour to another. So the rule of setting the watch is backwards compared to the normal wristwatches. To set two time zones, you have to pull the crown on the second position, the maximum position in this case, focus and move the red GMT hand on the desired time zone, considering the 12 o'clock subdial, which indicates the 12.24 hours time zone, which basically shows 12 a.m. or 12 p.m. And then move the crown from the second position to the first position and action individually the current hour time zone. The accelerated action of the hour hands being used for the date changing as well. And the least complicated feature is the third time zone which can be set with the help of the friction bidirectional bezel by moving the current desired time zone hour displayed on the bezel to the actual jumping hour hand. And I can imagine this watch put to work on an airport switching through flights and time zones by timing as well the connection flights. I personally salute the capability of the brand to come up with such a thing. A well-sized chronograph GMT that can fit so many things in that tiny case, not to mention the price, right? I was excited as well as I could have seen the three time zones chronograph above the already famous Q Panda chronograph. So I kinda signed up for a budget, charming, purposeful instrument. And in reality, I bought a lemon. I bought last week this Timex from Europe and when I started to prepare the watch for the video shootings, what do you think? The watch, strangely, wasn't working. The subdials were stuck and the chronograph hand was working and I was like, what? And when I was inspecting carefully the watch to see if the crown is not in the hacking position, I noticed that the crown was totally bent and the position of it was angled. And as I remember the unboxing, the watch was very well protected. I was quite amazed by the way it was packed. To succeed in bending the crown tube, you kinda have to apply a lot of force and obviously the crown will show marks of abuse or shock. But in this case it feels to be clean and immaculate. So this might have been a problem right from the factory. Timex lets a 3 time zone GMT go to market with a bent crown. But surprise, while maneuvering the watch, by opening and closing the crown, it started to work again. But that's not it. Quality-wise, I was surprised as well. The Q Panda chronograph kinda set higher expectations for myself, especially for this price point. The Australian batch apparently was well made. And besides the standard level of quality, the watch didn't have faults or assembly errors. Where in this case the three time zones bought from Europe was at the opposite pole. Having a lot of unforced faults like the dial scratch, the bent crown tube, the wavy finishing of the polished areas, the scratched hands and so on. 
and I'm pretty sure you'll say, Andre, this is a $240 watch. What did you expect? I fully understand this flavor as I consider myself one of the fewer content creators who makes correct assessments when it comes to judge value for the money asked. And here it wasn't about poor quality but more about sloppy handling and maybe the failure of maneuvering more complex features. But surely the Q-Panda chronograph set the standards quite high, increasing my expectations maybe too much. The specifications were good, I mean they are good, the watch as I mentioned has exactly the same case design as the Q chronograph, but differentiated through the height of the watch, as the newer one has a flat mineral glass. This case has 40mm as lug width, with 47mm as lug to lug, 11.5mm in height, 18mm between the lugs and weights, 123 grams. Has only 50 meters war resistance, a bi-directional friction bezel with the ability to browse through time zones and inside we have the quartz module full of features. A 1224 hours indicator at 12 o'clock, small seconds at 6 o'clock, 60 minutes chronograph counter at 9 o'clock, a date and a dedicated GMT hand. The module specs are totally unknown, but for sure this is a hybrid module between a GMT and a chronograph, as we can see the chronograph swipe of the second hand. As wearability, this being a one-on-one -on -one case with the Q-Panda, obviously sits like a vintage piece on the wrist, but looks like a modern tool watch, having a flat mineral glass instead of the boxed one with increased legibility on the hours thanks to the loomed markers proposed and the high-tech crown covered in rubber. On this model the bracelet is more comfortable without pulling hair from the wrist when sliding the watch on the forearm. The bracelet design of the clasp has a bigger taper compared to the Q-Panda and considering the modern take of the watch I would have seen the bracelets swapped between them. As a conclusion the Timex Q3 time zones has a quelque chose, that extra special thing with a complicated feature which sits on a properly sized case. But the brand kind of thrown away the focus on quality and clarity in the favor of the features. And the watch is not particularly beautiful. It is in the parameters of acceptance but combined with the sloppiness and the handling of parts and assembly. If you have the chance, I will recommend to check it visually before committing to buy one, even skip this model for a future Q version. Everything obviously to make sure that you won't receive a lemon as I did. Where my experience turned into a disappointing one, being now at the opposite pole, compared to the enthusiast built while owning the Q-Panda chronograph and the North Adventure. Concluding that complicated things can increase the risk of malfunction and poor handling. So these are kind of my thoughts in regard to the Q3 time zones. But I'm really curious to understand if you like this watch firstly and if you received it, how do you see it? please let me know in the comments below. And as usual, if you're new around, please consider subscribing for future episodes. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching and until next time, be brave, Bob. Stay safe.